Hello! In this video tutorial we'll start to take a look at how to fill your 3D scene with life. We will talk about how to work with 3D meshes and how to show images or texture your geometries. Ventus offers a number of geometry nodes with primitives that are generated during runtime. We already used the rectangle and the cube in some of the last videos of this tutorial series. In the geometry category of your toolbox you can find the rest of these primitives. Each one of them has different parameters that define the exact look of the geometry. For example the cylinder has size properties that define how long, wide and high it is. Here you can also add a hole in the middle of the cylinder. You can add a bevel to the edges of the cylinder and change the angle property to cut out a part of it. You can align it on all axes, define which parts of the cylinder to show and change the tessellation. The higher the tessellation, the more detailed the geometry. Lastly, you can switch the mapping of textures on it. Additionally to the primitive geometries, here are line and area charts. They take an array of numbers as inputs and align the edges of the area or the line accordingly. The last three important nodes in this category import and handle 3D meshes that were exported from other software. With a geometry import you can search for and open a 3D mesh file like an FBX, DAE or OBJ file. A full list of all supported formats can be found in the user menu on the supported formats page. In the asset property you can choose which file to import. To use an open dialog you can click on the three dots inside the property. When done you can click on the update button down here and you will notice that the import node builds a subtree representing the imported mesh. In the background Ventus converted the loaded file to a Ventus mesh file and saved that in the geometries folder in your project. In the node you can change some parameters that define the exact behavior of the importer. In the general category you can tell the importer to prompt you with a pop-up if any error occurs, change the scaling of the imported geometry and you can sort the subsets of the mesh either by material or leave it as it was originally. Lastly you can change how the hierarchy tree behind the importer node should be affected. If create nodes is turned off, the importer will not create new nodes once the update button is hit again and only update already existing ones. And when the update nodes flag is switched off, the importer will not update already existing nodes and always create new ones, leaving the old tree as it is and adding a new one. When none of these flags is ticked, nothing happens on import. And when both are ticked, already existing nodes are updated and new nodes are created when needed. In the material category you can set whether or not to import materials and in which subdirectory to put the imported textures and meshes. In the bounding box category you can overwrite the alignment of your geometry. If set to none the original pivot will be preserved. In the optimization category you can slim down the resulting hierarchy tree and bake the transformation to the meshes so that no axes will be needed or merge all equal materials and subsets. Lastly, you can flip the normals if the lighting would be wrong otherwise. Flip the UV coordinates to correct them and also flip the faces of your mesh if the wrong faces are shown. When looking at the generated tree you can see that here we have one of the nodes of the geometry category, the mesh loader. This node loads a VZM file and displays it on screen. You may add an axis and a material that will be applied to the geometry. Also, you can change the shown subset or prevent transparency artifacts on the mesh. So much for the export-import workflow. To have a faster iteration between Ventus and the 3D modeling software, you can use the Geometry Live link that currently exists for Cinema 4D. In order to use it, you will first have to set up your machine accordingly. You need Cinema 4D Studio version R16 or higher. Open it at least once with each user that needs to use the Ventus plugin. Start the Cinema 4D plugin installer that can be found in the Ventus installation folder. Here you can choose for which users to install the plugin and then you can restart Cinema 4D to let it load the plugin and you are ready to go.
First, we need to set up the live link. This can be done with the Ventus tags that the plugin provides. We need to add a Ventus setup link to an object in the scene hierarchy whose subtree we want to synchronize with Ventus. After that, we need to add a Ventus object link tag to all the objects we want to synchronize. When we now jump over to Ventus and add a geometry import live node to our hierarchy, we can switch the current live link in the live link menu on the bottom left of the property window. Here you can first choose between the found running instances of Cinema 4D and then you can choose which setup link tag to use. When done, you will have to click the update button once to create the necessary hierarchy tree behind the live link node. In the node you may only set whether or not to show a pop-up on errors and how to scale the imported geometry. In order to configure the live link, you need to go to Cinema 4D and click on one of the object link tags. Click directly on the tag in the hierarchy and not on the object. In the attributes window of Cinema 4D, you can now see the parameters of the tag and change it. You can define how the object should be named on the Ventus side. For the refresh of the geometry which works like if you would hit the update button on the Ventus side. You can synchronize your scene's animation with the start and end of animation parameters and create animation button. Deleting the animation again is possible with a clear animation. Down here you can define which parts of the object to transfer to Ventus. You can send the geometry, the transformation and the material. In this category you can also define which parts of the material to send exactly. Just note the different naming conventions of different 3D software. Color will change the diffuse color of Ventus. Luminance will change the emissive color. Specular changes the specularity and diffusion affects the base color. How exactly those will be handled in Ventus will be explained later in this tutorial. So much for the geometry live link. Let us now take a look at how to show images in your scene and how to color your geometries. In the texture category of the toolbox you can find the image node. This displays a texture that you can define in the texture property group. You can define to use a texture loader with which you can search for any texture file on your system with a file property. Again, to use an open dialog with it, you can click on the three dots on the property. Also, you can generate a 1D gradient or an SVG file. Lastly, you can create a texture property and use an external node that generates a texture. In the options property, you can change the alignment of the shown image. Choose to normalize the size to one unit or simply use the dimensions of the texture without downscaling. Enable or disable the lighting and turn the back face of the image on or off. When clicking on the generated movie clip node, you can see its properties. Here you have a very extensive movie playback engine. In the movie category you can change the file property to decide which movie to load. When the enabled flag is turned off, the movie playback will be stopped and also does not consume any performance anymore. You can change the video stream, whether or not to automatically play the movie on scene start and whether or not to load it asynchronously. With the next properties you can seek in your video. The Seek 2 time defines to which point of the video to jump to. After Seek will define what the movie does once seeking was completed and the Seek method starts the seeking. When scrubbing is turned on the seeking will already be performed once the time was changed without having to trigger the Seek method. In the control category you have all other controls of the movie. You can pause, replay from the start and play from the current time with these methods. When the reverse flag is on, the movie plays backwards and with the loop properties you can change whether or not to loop the movie and from which points to do so. The last category regards everything having to do with audio. You can turn it on and off, change the stream, the output ordinal defining which output device to use and the volume. The movie frame node works similar, but you do not control it like the movie clip node. You rather input a frame property that defines which frame of the movie clip to render. The movie stream uses a stream instead of a file. The live video works similar, but does not use a URL as an input, but rather a physical input on your machine. 
If you have an SDI card in your machine, you can choose to output on it or take it as an input in Ventus. Ventus has virtual ordinals for both the live video input and output that are mapped automatically to the physical interfaces. This way you can build your scene with a live video node that uses one of these ordinals and uses its textures in your scene. When moving the project to the production machine, the virtual ordinal will be mapped to the physical input of that machine and you do not have to change anything in the scene. The same goes for the outputs. You can tell Ventus to not output on your GPU but rather on the STI output card. The exact mappings of the inputs and outputs can be changed in the Ventus configuration editor. This small application is discussed in the user manual in detail. So much on how to use images and movies in your scene. Lastly, we can have a look at how to use the material system. We will barely go into detail on the material node. In order to have a full overview of the new material system, you will need to use other learning resources like the user manual. A material node can be placed in different ways to your hierarchy. First, you can search for the material node in the color material category of the toolbox. But also the alpha node and the color node are just presets of the material node. Lastly, you can also drag and drop any texture provider like the movie clip to the hierarchy editor. This will create a material node that is already bound to the drop texture provider. Like any other node in the hierarchy, it affects all of its children. So if you place a geometry of any kind behind the material, you can see it already affected by it. When clicking on the material, you can see its properties in the property window. You can see that it has an alpha value that can be turned down to fade out the geometry and flags that affect the behavior of the alpha. You can define the alpha absolutely or relative to alpha nodes placed before that one in the hierarchy. And you can block the subtree of the alpha node automatically once the value is set to zero to save performance. Lastly, you can handle transparency issues of the elements in the subtree that you for example get when animating in or out. Next, you can change the lighting model. By default, it will be inherited from the last material node. If there is no material in front of this one, it will be set to base color lighting model with white color. Turning down the opacity instead of the alpha value, you can change the transparency but keep the specularity of the object, creating a glass-like effect. The base color lighting model is the easiest model using lighting. Alternatives are the Garo and Fong models. Garo has no specularity but shades the object diffusely. And Fong is the same lighting model as base color but with more advanced parameters. The base color changes the diffuse reflection color of the material. Emissive adds a color to every point of the surface. Specular changes the specular spot on your geometry. Ambient affects the color of the darker spots of the surface. Turning down the sharpness widens the specular spot and the roughness affects optional reflections on your material. You can also turn two-sided shading on and tell the renderer to shade vertex-wise and not pixel-wise, which results in flat-looking surfaces. Incidence lighting is a special model that uses the incidence angles of the light on the object to define the color using 1D gradients as a reference. Light can be placed in your hierarchy as well and affect all nodes rendered after them, whether they are children of the light nodes or not. There are point, spot and directional lights. While point lights emit light in all directions starting from the defined point, spot lights limit the angle to only a specified range. Directional lights hit the surfaces in the same angle everywhere in the scene. If you want to ignore the lighting of your scene completely, you can use the No Light model. This model can be used best when you want to simply display images on your geometries. To do this, you can add a material stage using a texture and mapping it to the base color, optionally with the alpha channel. This way you can map your images not only to a rectangle like with the image node, but to all geometries. Instead of using the base color, you can also write the texture to any other channel like the specularity, roughness or ambient color. Mm -hmm. 
As said before in this tutorial series, there are several tutorial and demo projects available in the project browser of the designer. Here you can also download a material library with a lot of sample materials that you can use throughout your projects in any way you like. Or you can just have a look at it to learn more about how to use the material system. This is all for now about the material and lighting system. You may start to play around with it and explore the possibilities of the material. This closes the tutorial about geometries and images in your Ventus scenes. In the next tutorial we will have a look at how to animate your scenes and make them interactive.